Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doomsday. Why don't we wait till we get lights back on again? Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will. That I will support the Constitution. Support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States and the Constitution. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. Of the State of Illinois. And that I will. And that I will faithfully discharge. Faithfully discharge the duties of. The duties of mayor for the day. Mayor for the day. According to the best. According to the best of my ability. My ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Madam Clerk, can we have the roll? Belzac? Here. Plistic? Here. Gustafson? Here. Kenny? Here. Shower? Here. Sullivan? Here. Vaughn? Here. Seven present. We have a quorum. Does anyone in the audience have anything they would like to say regarding an item on our agenda or anything not on our agenda? You have three minutes to speak. Good job. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Mary O'Dowd. Thank you for allowing me to speak. The other day, I was stopped in traffic along Plainfield Road. I looked up and saw a banner attached to a street light. It displayed an American flag and read, the city of Darien remembers 9-11-2001. For years, I worked in Tower One, the North Tower, floor 57. Every year, footage of 9-11 is shown a lot on TV. Even 20 years later, it's hard to watch. But watch, we must. And remember, we must. For despite those who actively want to destroy this great nation, despite those who trivialize 9-11 as a day when some people did some things, and despite those who desecrate the stars and stripes, dishonor our national anthem, and want to defund police, the United States of America is the greatest nation on earth, and it remains one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you, City of Darien, for remembering, for standing up for liberty, and reminding us never to forget. With the special thoughts and prayers for our brave citizens and allies abandoned in Afghanistan, may God bless the United States of America and all who serve her. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? May I have a motion to approve the minutes of September 7th, 2021 when moved by Alder Person Kenny um, and second, seconded by Alder Person Sullivan. Um, the minutes have been approved. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Kenny? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Gustafson? Epstein. Klistic? Aye. Shower? Aye. 
Six ayes and one abstention. The, the minutes have been approved. Next one. Do any of the older persons have any communication for the council? Um, Alder Person Vaughn. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, I have a few uh, uh, pieces of communication. I have communication from Charlene Valume, Valume uh, and, and Chris Thomas. Uh, they are against the current proposal for the garbage, garbage cans. They want to keep, keep the stickers. Uh, Kim Savage is a fan of the uh, LRS program, the new program that's being proposed. And uh, residents at 722 70th Street, uh, there was an accident on the street that caused a car to run into, the tr and run into a tree. Uh, so they were just concerned about the high volumes of traffic that is coming down uh, Richmond from 70th through 71st. Uh, they're looking to probably evaluate getting uh, speed bumps in that area. So. Um, also on that same block, uh, residents at 7, 713 7, 7th Street and 722 7th Street, uh, they mentioned that their mail uh, keeps coming up missing uh, for weeks now. Um, I think the lady's name is Joyce. Uh, she mentioned that she had three checks that were supposed to be in the mail she never received. And I think the entire block got affected by that. I'm not sure if any of the aldermen are experiencing anything like that, but um, this one particular block, for some reason, the mail keeps com their mail keeps coming up missing. So, and that's all I have. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? All Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also received this communication from um, Mr. Thomas regarding the, the the garbage contract, along with Patricia uh, Coutre in uh, Daring Club, uh, Judith Eisman. Um, and Florence Popel and uh, Norman Quartz, all uh, not in favor of the current con contract proposal on our agenda this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did receive uh, the same communication that I think many of the aldermen did from Chris Thomas against um, the garbage contract with LRS. Um, also, Thelma Holka. Um, sent a message just um, expressing that she, um, her infrequency of use of garbage, um, you know, is very rare and that she does not feel like she should be required to participate um, or be mandated. And then Dennis Holland um, also posed some questions about um, you know, the program and I, I believe Brian Vanna replied to those questions. Um, I also received a communication from resident Kelly Glisson just um, highlighting um, the sadness and the um, epidemic um, our nation and our communities are facing right now with the um, um, troubling fentanyl-laced um, drugs. And a lot of young people um, are be, be falling victim of it, um, unbeknownst that that's what's happening. And um, just stressing again, um, you know, the awareness of um, our community and the continued um, his continued stance on um, not allowing um, a cannabis dispensary in Darien. And then lastly, I did receive several communications. There was an accident on North Frontage Road um, between Bailey and um, the Shell gas station right along the, um, where the St. Trey Shrine is and Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And um, many <coughs> residents um, were asking because the fence has been um, down for quite some time. They were inquiring about a guardrail, and um, I did reach out to um, Dan Gombeck, who um, you know he's been pursuing the um, IDOT because that is a IDOT road about repairing the fence, replacing the fence, and um, I'm going to ask him to reply um, so that the residents um, listening tonight can understand the um, you know guardrails aren't going to necessarily solve the problem of people literally going into the. Um, I guess you'll call it the culvert that then, you know, ties into the ramp onto southbound I-55. Correct, and just to reiterate that, guardrails are not used as a uh, defense for uh, cars veering off the roadway. Um, so there are, there are other alternatives, whether it's a roadway configuration, uh, additional um, safety markers, for example. Uh, so we're gonna be, uh, um, in contact with IDOT again and see if there's some opportunity to modify that portion. The fence, as we all know, uh, appears to be coming down at least four to five times a year 
um, and again it's fixed next thing you know again it's uh, wiped out for about 300 to 500 feet every time and um, you know sadly the situation that happened last week there was a fatality involved um, the accident um, clearly had happened overnight um, it wasn't like it had just happened and they were they were found upon but um, that is quite a, um, a sharp turn and we're not even talking weather issues right now there's there was it was a dry night there was no ice and um, so Dan I thank him for pursuing it with IDOT so that we can see what can be done because um, like you said the fence is been down for a very long time now but um, it's it's uh, happening all the time All right, that takes us to our mayor's report. Uh, tonight we have several proclamations that I'd like to read. Our first one is with regarding to Arts DuPage. Whereas Arts DuPage has regularly issued official proclamations to all the cities, towns, and villages in DuPage County on an annual basis, designating October as Arts DuPage Month. And whereas the arts embody much of the accumulated wisdom, intellect, and imagination of humankind, and whereas the arts enrich us as individuals and play a unique role in the lives of our families, our communities, and whereas the arts promote a better understanding of the diversified cultures within our communities and unify us regarding, regardless of age, race, and ethnicity, and whereas the arts sector in DuPage County consists of 2,272 arts-related businesses and account for 4.2% of the total number of businesses in the region, a larger share of the economy than transportation, tourism, agriculture, and construction. Whereas the arts provide full-time employment for over 15,000 workers in DuPage County, and whereas the arts improve our economy, enrich our civic life, drive tourism and commerce, and exert a profound positive influence on the education of our children, and whereas the coronavirus has devastating impact on DuPage County's creative sector, forcing 99% of arts organizations to shut down, thus placing artists among the most severely affected segments of the nation's workforce. Even in challenging times, the arts help collectively lead us through the darkest of times of the pan pandemic, lifting our spirits, unifying communities, and providing entertainment. Now with the move to phase five of Illinois' COVID-19 mitigation plan, the arts will play a vital role in rebuilding our communities, jumpstarting the economy, and leading us back to normalcy. Now therefore, I, Joseph A. Marquez, Mayor of the City of Darien, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2021 as Arts DuPage Month in the City of Darien and call upon our community members to celebrate and promote the arts in in DuPage County. Is there anyone here tonight to accept this proclamation? Okay. I have a, another proclamation for a National Hispanic Heritage Month. Whereas we celebrate National Hispanic Heritage Month and the rich history, culture, contributions, importance of Hispanics and Latinos to our country and our community and the American citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, Central America, and South America. And whereas the Hispanic Heritage Observance began in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson, President Ronald Reagan in 1988 expanded the observance to cover a month starting on September 15th and ending on October 15th. Hispanic Heritage Month was enacted into law on August 17th, 1988. And whereas the September 15th date is significant because it is the anniversary of independence for five Latin American countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. In addition, Mexico and Chile celebrate their independence days on September 16th and September 18th, respectively. Also, Columbus Day, or Dia de la Raza, which is October 12th, falls within this 30-day period. Whereas the 2021 national theme for the observance is Esperanza, a celebration of Hispanic heritage and hope. 
The theme invites everyone to celebrate Hispanic heritage and to reflect on how great tomorrow can be with resilience and hope. It encourages reflection of all contributions Hispanics have made in the past and will continue to make in the future. And whereas today Hispanics form the largest ethnic or racial minority group in the United States with over 60.6 .6 million population, in 2019 Hispanics con constituted 18.5% of the nation's population. Hispanics are advancing our economy, improving our communities, and bettering our country. And whereas during National Hispanic Heritage Month, we honor and celebrate the rich and vibrant traditions of the Hispanic and Latino faith and hard work and patriotism. And whereas we are grateful for the innumerable contributions Hispanics have made to our society, all of which are vital to our community. Now, therefore, I, Joseph A. Marquez, Mayor of the City of Darien, in recognition of Hispanic heritage, Hispanic Americans, past and present in our community, do hereby proclaim September 15, 2021 to October 15, 2021, as National Hispanic American Heritage Month in the City of Darien, and encourage all residents to celebrate our diverse heritage and culture and continue the efforts to recreate a world that is more just, peaceful, and prosperous. Is there anyone here to pick this up tonight, this proclamation? <coughs> okay. I know we have another item, the annual financial report. Um, I haven't done this for a while, but I'd like to update the residents of the city on uh, the Department of Health's uh, recent uh, comments on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, DuPage County Health Department noted today that community transmission level metrics are moving in a positive direction that may result in a, its lowering to substantial. Right now, we're rated high. And what high means is if that if we have 100 people who test positive, or 100 or more, per so many thousand, you have a high level. Substantial would be less than 100. The level was low in May and early June. DuPage County advised members that nationally the country is a high level of community transmission and Illinois and DuPage County metrics are much better by comparison. In fact, Illinois is ranked seventh in the country for the lowest transmission rate, lowest hospitalizations, lowest, lowest ICU beds, and lowest um, deaths due to COVID. So we are making progress in the state and DuPage County is far ahead of every other county in the state in terms of having a 95% uh, percent vaccination rate among 65 and older and 71% overall. The bad news is cases by age group show the greatest activity in zero to 19 and 20 to 29 age groups. The CDC added recommendations for mass space cover coverings trigger at low to moderate community transmission levels. When we are able to drop down to low again from high, we go from high to substantial to another level and then to low, there is good possibility that these things won't be worn in settings like this. DCH uh, HD noted that cases involving children had, have increased uh, nationally. Uh, members were updated on CDC guidelines concerning boosters and advanced eligibility, including first responders and frontline employees. Those of you who are 65 and older, if you're in that group, you can go to Walgreens, OSCO, CVS, uh, Mariano's, and you can fill out your paperwork and you can get a booster shot. Uh, the health department said you could get your booster shot and your flu shot at the same time, but um, a lot of people are choosing to separate the two, but there's nothing wrong with getting them both at the same time. Uh, DCHD clarified third doses and the difference from a booster. The doses are strongly recommended for individuals in high risk occupational and institutional settings. Third doses have the same effect on you that the second dose did. So if you had some after effects from your second dose of Pfizer, you probably will have similar effects after your, third, after your booster shot. 
So these are just some things I wanted to mention. Uh, this was all the information uh, given out by the DuPage County Health Department yesterday. I was on a conference uh, Zoom call with them and found out this information. I just thought it would be important to share it. And now at this point, uh, I'd like to have our annual financial report. Someone here for that? Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, yeah, I'd like to introduce, this is Jim Savio, he's the partner of the firm Sickich. They've been performing our annual audit for quite a few years now, been doing a great job, I think, and he did present it to the Finance Committee last month, and here he is for the entire council. Jim? Thank you. Great, thank you, Mike. Thanks everyone for your time tonight, really do appreciate it. Um, want to start off too, just by thanking uh, Brian, Mike, Julie, the entire staff for all of their help throughout the uh, entire audit process. Uh, went uh, very smoothly again this year. We were mostly remote this year. We were on site for a, a couple of days, uh, but otherwise uh, pretty much remote uh, and things went uh, very well. Got the reports out on time, so I want to thank them for that. So uh, what I'll do is kind of like I do every year, go through uh, just a few of the highlights of the annual financial report. I won't go in as much detail as I did with the uh, Administrative and Finance Committee. Um, and then also go over our board communication uh, to the City Council as well, and then be happy to answer any questions on those reports or the other reports we issued as well. So uh, for the annual financial report, I'm gonna start on page one, which is the uh, independent auditor's report. Uh, these are the uh, three pages that we as the auditors prepare and are responsible for. Uh, management's responsible for the rest of the annual financial report. Um, and those responsibilities are explained here on page one of the independent auditor's report. Uh, on page two, uh, up at the very top is the uh, paragraph that most people are interested in. That's the opinion paragraph. Uh, and again, this year we issued an unmodified opinion, which is highest level of assurance that we can provide to the city. Right after the independent auditor's report is the management discussion and analysis uh, prepared by uh, Julie and the team. Um, great overview, of the city's financial position and changes in financial position, uh, point out any significant changes or trends that might be occurring. Uh, and it has some two-year comparative data that you can't find elsewhere in the annual financial report. So uh, I tell you every year, if you only, only want to read one thing in the report, read the MDNA because it provides a good overview of the city's finances. Uh, on page seven, not MDNA page seven, but actual page seven, just want to point out the uh, general fund uh, performance this year. So on page seven is the balance sheet for your governmental funds, and you'll see the first column is the general fund. Um, you'll see uh, fund balance down at the bottom, the unassigned fund balance is about $6.3 million, which is an increase from prior years, $4.5 million. And that's about 56% of current year expenditures or about a seven month uh, reserve. And then on page nine is the statement of revenues, expenditures and changes in fund balance for governmental funds. Uh, this is your income statement basically. Um, and you'll see about two thirds of the way down the page, the excess of revenues over expenditures was about $5.5 million. Uh, last year it was 3.7 million. And then after a transfer out mainly to the capital improvement program, the net change in fund balance was about $1.9 million. And then the last thing I'll point out in the annual financial report, uh, I point this out every year again too, but just the funded ratio of your, of your uh, pension funds. Um, that starts on page 57, uh, the schedule of changes in the employer's net pension liability and related ratios. And you'll see uh, about two thirds of the way down the page, the, the very top, the total pension liability, that's the liability that the actuary calculates at IMRF. Uh, that's what you owe uh, in, in retiree benefits uh, for both active and inactive uh, uh, members. Uh, then the plan fiduciary net position, that's the assets you have set aside at IMRF to pay for those liabilities. And then the difference between the two is either net pension uh, liability or net pension asset. And you can see about two thirds of the way down the page. This year uh, for calendar year 2020, it's actually a net pension asset, about $489,000. So you're about 102% funded. So. Uh, that's an increase from prior year's 94% uh, funding. So a uh, very good year uh, investment wise uh, for the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund. And then the very same information is on pages 59 and 60 for the police pension fund. Uh, again, you'll see 
There's a net pension liability uh, of about $19.1 million, and then the funded ratio is about 65%, but that was, again, an uh, increase of about 10% from the prior year. So again, a very good uh, investment return uh, for uh, fiscal year uh, 2021, about, I think, 25% uh, investment rate of return, so very good. Um, that's all I have on the annual financial report. On the auditor's communication to the Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council, um, Again, on the table of contents here, um, I'll point out uh, there's some required communication that we have to have with the city council each year. Um, that's on pages two through four. Uh, pretty routine communication this year. We didn't have any delays, like I said, no disagreements with management at all. Uh, we did um, communicate that the city implemented Gatsby Statement 95, and what that did was delay some of the uh, accounting pronouncements due to the pandemic. Um, after that, our adjusting journal entries on pages five through seven. Uh, we had 13 adjustments this year. And then past adjustments, I should go back, adjusting journal entries are uh, entries we found as part of the audit process. So we are required to communicate that to the city council. Past adjustments that are on pages eight through 10 are adjustments that were deemed to be immaterial, so we didn't record them. But above a certain floor, we have to communicate that to the city council. So that's on pages eight through 10. And then the uh, communication of deficiencies and in internal control and other comments to management, that starts on page 11. And if you turn to page 12, I believe, what this says basically is we had no material weaknesses, we didn't have any significant deficiencies, and we just had one new deficiency uh, on page 10, uh, and that related to AJE uh, number six. And then page 15, is the status of the prior year comments. And you'll see those comments uh, were still uh, still applicable this year. Uh, and the segregation of duties is mainly due to the small finance staff. So it's just a, a matter of making sure that there's other compensating controls and reviews in, in place to uh, compensate for the, for the lack of segregation of duties. That's all I have on those two reports. We did issue a one-page management letter um, and what that basically says in writing is that there were no material weaknesses. Uh, and then this year we issued, because you had uh, CARES funding, uh, you did have a single audit. When you expend more than $750,000 in federal funds, you have to have a, a, what we call a single audit. So that report was also issued. And then the final report, if you expend more than 500000 in state and federal monies, um, you have to... Um, prepare a consolidated year-end financial report with, uh, with the state each year. If you expend more than uh, actually $300,000 in state and federal funds, they want us to give a, an opinion on that schedule. So that is the last, uh, last report that we issued. So um, with that, be happy to answer any questions that the council may have on uh, any of those reports. Any questions from the council? Tom? Not a quick question. With regards to general revenue for utilities, is that normally natural gas, electricity, and, and how does the future trend, for example, if people are getting electric cars, or you know, they'll be buying less gas, vice versa, how does that affect like city finances, different trends like that, people are getting solar, so they're buying less electricity, so if you're using you know, a certain amount of your bill to pay taxes to the city, how does that in general generally affect cities, have you seen? Yeah, that obviously that would that would reduce uh, some of those utility taxes depending on what they are. So local MFT or even you know the state MFT. Obviously, that's gonna that's gonna be reduced. But uh, what page was it that you were? Oh, just this general question. Like I see okay. we get from utilities, right? Yeah, because there's probably so that's a big chunk of change we get from utilities. Yeah. So that's trending downwards. We have to you know make up for it or understand other avenues yep. of uh, revenue, right? So yeah, and there's a few. Uh, accounts and revenue streams that are lumped in there too. So, yep. Anything else, Mary? I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank um, Jim for his professionalism and um, it's great to have the continuity year to year with him working with us. And um, like he mentioned earlier, he did have an opportunity to sit down with the admin finance committee and delve into a little deeper de detail and it was super helpful. Um, big shout out to Julie, our staff accountant who works hand in hand with him and just really um, her processes and her you know, coordination and having the extra challenge of having to do things remote 
um, you know, scanning and zipping things. Um, that's just a lot more tasks on her plate and she does so seamlessly. And thanks again to our treasurer Corin and Brian Vanna and all the staff for um, making this come together so smoothly. Um, thank you. Right. One, yeah. one comment at the admin finance committee, there were some questions about our three outstanding bonds and those are on page 78 uh, 70, uh, I'm sorry, 78, 79, and 80, and it just lists the debt service uh, schedule, and two of those are about, th one of them is about three years out, another one is about five years out, and <coughs> the uh, other bond expires in 2030, so that's a little bit longer out there, but those are the three bonds that we have outstanding. Nothing else? Thank you. Great, yep, thank you very much. Does the city clerk have a report? No report this evening, thank you. Does the city administrator have a report? Uh, no report, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Okay. Does anyone have questions for Chief Thomas or Mr. Gombeck? Treasurer Corn, can you give us your report? <laughs> <laughs> I think Dan has oh. oh, I'm they sorry. They want to talk. Nobody had a question, but they want to talk. Junior Mayor and Honorable Mayor Marquez, uh, yeah, I'd just like to report. Uh, recently, staff uh, uh, submitted for an application, a uh, grant application, it's referred to as uh, Safe Routes to School. Um, and actually, what we submitted was uh, for two sidewalks. These are neighborhood sidewalks, so they're not just block sidewalks. In particular, the, uh, one is uh, Clarendon Hills Road from 67th Street all the way up to Plainfield Road on the eastern right of way. So that is one application. Uh, that application, we've come to the uh, conclusion that the estimated cost is going to be approximately 455000 Of that, the city cost will be 275000 of which 25000 is in there for contingency. Uh, the second one is for 79th Street. Uh, those familiar with 79th Street from Cass Avenue to approximately Stratford. Uh, there's currently no sidewalk to get anyone to cast there. Uh, so we're proposing for the southern right of way, uh, the sidewalk, we'll call that missing link. Again, neighborhood sidewalk, uh, which is gonna be in a cost of approximately 190,000. The city's cost would be 60,000 with an additional contingency of uh, approximately 10,000. Now, unlike other grants, this one's a little unique. Uh, it's unique from um, what the uh, IDOT wanted in this case was a commitment from the mayor uh, to allocate funds. Obviously, mayors are, doesn't, doesn't, does, do not have the authority to commit such types of money, so we had put a letter pending uh, budget, uh, pending budget talks. Uh, in conjunction with that, we did get support from the school superintendents. Um, that is from the uh, Concord School as well as from the Mark DeLay School District. This grant is for K through 12. And again, what it does is it promotes uh, uh, walking and or biking to school. Not that we encourage biking on sidewalks, but that's some of the uh, rhetoric uh, understanding from this program. So again, just want to let the council know that, uh, you know, we're uh, looking at these grants actively and you know, we're gonna keep on pursuing them, but the, we'll see what happens here. Dan, Dan, I think it's, you need to reiterate that these are community sidewalks, that the Clarendon Hill sidewalk from 67th down to Plainfield Road would provide for access to Hinsdale South High School for any students on 69th Street or any of those homes back there. They could actually walk now down their side of the street cross over Plainfield and get to Hinsdale South High School. In addition to that, and what Dan didn't mention is, is there's consideration of putting in a crosswalk th uh, that would allow for access from the east side of Claren Hills Road to the west side, which would provide access to the community park. Uh, as you might know, n note a number of people, and I think Alderman Vaughn received a lot, of, a lot of questions about this from residents in his ward. People were looking for a sidewalk there and they were looking for a crosswalk. But again, this is an application for a grant. We don't know if 
if putting that comment in there pending budget approval is gonna ruin our chances, but we had to put that in there. We've never been asked to have the mayor allocate money without council approval. So that's why we had to put that statement in there so that they knew that we weren't gonna do that unless the council approved it. So we don't know when we're gonna get these grants, if we're gonna get these grants, um, but I think that this is a good effort on our part to improve a community, uh, a community sidewalk. And the other one on 79th would actually provide access for children to get to uh, Concord School much easier. So they both they both work to alleviate safety concerns for children getting to school. I just want to reiterate that and make sure people understand that. Right, and just to expound on that, again, if this was a sidewalk that was, let's say, going through a non-thoroughfare um, with low volume traffic, let's say, this, would, this program would not qualify for it, nor would the city take the position that we, the city, would be allocating funds for that. This is something that serves an entire neighborhood, and that contingency that's in there for Clarendon Hills Road is for that potential crosswalk if it comes about. And you know, one more thing, I'm sorry. Uh, when these grants come out, they're very limited with a timeline. In this particular case, I think we were given four weeks, four to five weeks to get all the information together. And it's quite a lot of information, engineering or preliminary engineering, a summary. So it's not that we have an opportunity to get the city council and ask for these funds prior to because it's so fluid that boom, we have to get these applications in. You don't get them in, and then we then we found out Friday uh, that they extended the deadline till today because I had had some computer prog glitches. So that's my report. Thank you. Mayor, uh, Chief Thomas, anything? No. Right. Treasurer Corn, can you give us your report? Thank you, Mayor. First of all, this evening I'm requesting council's approval of warrant number 212210 in the amount of $770,868.32 from the listed funds, payroll for the period ended September 9th in the amount of $268,023.46 for a total to be approved of $1,038,891.78. Michael, do you want to do these separately or do you want to do them both together? Might as well do the second. Why don't you do the second okay. one as well? Also asking council's approval of warrant number 212211 in the amount of $119,549.98 from the listed funds. Payroll for the period ended, uh, says September 9th. I think that's a misprint though. That should be uh, September 25th, I believe, in the amount of $289,175.80 for a total to be approved of $408,725.78. Can I have a motion and a second to approve the warrant? Um, approved by yeah. uh, okay. Alder Person Vaughn and who else? Um, Alder Person Belzac. Questions or comments? Um, Just ask if there's any questions. Um, any questions or comments? I got a comment, Mr. Mayor. I think you're doing a great job tonight. Here's my comment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for roll. Um, can I have the rule? Vaughn? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Shower? Aye. Plistic? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Seven eyes. Okay. Then I also have the monthly report for the four months ended August 31st, which reflects general fund year-to-date revenue of $6,751,694, expenditures of $4,897,175, current balance of $6,215,979, water fund year-to-date revenue of $2,515,369, expenses of $1,851,300, current balance of $4,267,031, Motor fuel tax fund year to date revenue $535,562, expenses of $1,281,190, current balance of $620,695. Water depreciation fund year to date revenue of $718, expenses of 
$2,717, current balance of $2,976,371, and capital improvement fund year-to-date revenue of $146,964, expenses of $756,322 for a current balance of $7,605,028. Thank you, Mr. Corn. Thank you. Does anyone have questions or comments related to our agenda? Oh. Do any of our chairpersons have a report for the council? Um, Alderperson Sullivan. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this evening, the Admin Finance Committee met and we are meeting again um, on November, hold on a second, oh, that's, um, November 1st at uh, 6 p.m. in the upstairs conference room. The Economic Development Committee is meeting this Thursday, November 7th um, in council chambers at 7 p.m. And I know um, all the um, alder person here as long, along with the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Economic Development Committee has been invited to participate in an economic development workshop for elected officials on October 23rd. Um, we are very fortunate to have uh, a tremendous resource amongst us with Brian Gay um, utilizing the National League of Cities material. Um, and I think it'll be a great um, morning and time spent together learning and collaborating and I hope everyone will be able to attend. Alder Person Belzac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the next Municipal Services Committee meeting will be held on October 25th at 7 p.m. in Council Chambers. Alder Person Kenny. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Police Committee meeting will meet on October 18th, on this Monday night, 6 p.m. in the Police Training Room across the parking lot. And now, does anyone have any questions or comments related to our agenda? If so, please come forward and address the Council. We have no business, so. I think someone's out there in the dark. <laughs> I see movement. <laughs> it's a little dark, thank you, hi. I'm Catherine Hodak, um, and I wanted to just, um, I heard a couple of the councilmen who reported from their residents that they were hoping to keep this thicker, maintain the current hybrid program in some shape, um, and I would just wanna second that. I. Uh, really just don't want to pay for a program that we don't need or want there are a lot of residents who still appreciate the opportunity to use the stickers versus the cart programs um the the carts are very big we're looking at having to put them outside of our garage um, building an enclosure you know these are things that we're not looking forward to um the other you know keeping it simple just going to jewel and buying the stickers is uh very simple i just had our credit card information compromised again today. And this adding the garbage disposal people is another person on my list to contact if I've had that happen and I've give them my new credit card number. It's just another frustration that I just, it's a program that, you know, that we don't need or want as far as some of the residents and my neighbors have also mentioned the same thing. So that is what I wanted, yep. What do you what do you use now to put your garbage outside? How do you? We do have you the small can, uh, just regular garbage cans, the small okay, squishy yeah. ones. They're circular, so you can kind of maneuver them around the cars versus the square bulk Thanks. ones. And we're, I mean, I've been up here before. We use very little. We make very little trash. It's just my husband and myself. Um, you know, uh, I understand there's you know changes in the sticker prices, and that's fine. We are happy to pay those higher prices to keep that program as an option. The carts are a great program for the majority of the residents and I hope they, you know, enjoy using that option and choose that because it does seem like a good program. It's just for, not for all the residents. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I see someone coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got night vision. My prison goggles on. <laughs> Council, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is William Huron. Um, I do have a question on a lot, lot of literature that I've been reading. I haven't seen, I'm not a senior yet, so if we went with the 35-gallon container, 
what's the difference in the cost between that and the 65 or is it still the same price as the 65 so there's there's only for the seniors there's a discount of the ten dollars right thank you Hello, Chris Bennis. Uh, I'd like to second many of the things that people were saying about the sticker program. I'd hate to see it go. Um, I'm new to Darien, moved in in 2018 and initially heard about the sticker program. I didn't think I'd like it. Turns out it's great, uh, similar to the other lady. It's just me and my wife. We compost and recycle and the amount of regular trash we throw out is minimal. Um, so I'd hate to see that go to the wayside and be forced to pay $20 a month. I'd actually like to see the village do more with composting, um, but I guess that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. We have no old business, so we will now move on to our consent agenda. Okay. Uh, we have a number of items on the consent agenda that I'll read. Item A, consideration of a motion to grant a waiver of the raffle license bond requirement for the Hinsdale South High School Booster Club. Item B, consideration of a motion to approve a resolution accepting a proposal from ADS LLC uh, DBA doing, doing business as adds environmental services for the 2021 water leak survey in an amount not to exceed $12,019.80. Item C, consideration of a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the purchase of one new Challenger vehicle lift from Lift Now Automotive and Equipment Corporation in an amount not to exceed $52,917.80. Item D, consideration of a motion to approve a resolution accepting a proposal from EJ Equipment for a lease agreement of a Vactor truck for hydro excavation at various locations throughout the city for Buffalo box repairs during the meter replacement program at a proposed unit price and not to exceed $72,000. Item E, consideration of a motion to approve a resolution accepting a proposal from Baxter and Woodman Natural Resources for the native planting materials, installation, and a three-year monitoring period as related to the lawn conversion to native plantings at the southeast quadrant of 74th Street and Elm Street in an amount not to exceed $23,470. And item F, consideration of a motion approving a transfer from the general fund to the Capital Projects Fund of $1,800,000. Motion to approve. Alder Alderman Belzac, seconded by Alderperson Schauer, and the roll. Belzac? Aye. Schauer? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Penny? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Klistik? Aye. Seven ayes. The consent agenda is approved. Uh, new business, we have two items. Item A, consideration of a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the purchase of one new 2022 Ford F350 XL 4x2 pickup from Roche Ford in an amount not to exceed $48,666. Motion to approve. Alderman Schauer, seconded by Alderperson uh, Gustafson. Questions, comments, discussion? If none, the roll. Schauer? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Klistik? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. Seven ayes. Item B, consideration of a motion direct staff to negotiate a contract with LRS for option two, carts only, in substantial conformance with the LRS proposal dated September 15th, 2021. Motion to approve. Alderperson Belzac, seconded by Alderperson Glistak. Uh, Questions, comments, discussion? 
Alderwoman Sullivan. Thank you, Mayor. I know we uh, had an opportunity in our workshop prior to council starting to talk about this topic. And um, I know Alderman Kenny mentioned um, it'd be great for it to be restated with um, our audience here and um, obviously it being televised, um, you know, just addressing some of the more um, prevalent concerns by the community as it relates to cart sizing and costs and, um, you know, reiterating what's all included and what the differences is and the value of this proposed um, new plan. Why don't we ask the two gentlemen from Elvarez to come forward so they can answer any questions? Could you introduce yourselves? Uh, George Strom, uh, Vice President, Municipal Services. And uh, Josh Connell, Managing Partner. Any questions? Alderman Vaughn. Uh, quick question on the sticker. Is it is it possible to include the sticker in this option two sticker program? As uh, Catherine said, most people, you know, they're paying for, if they go with the option two, they're paying for a service that they really don't need because some folks are co using composite and recycling. Other folks, they put out garbage once a month. Um, so with the sticker option, what I believe it does, it lowers the cost for those who use it less, right? So is it possible to still include that sticker option along with um, the senior option for the $10, but for those who just wanna pay as they go and put out garbage on it, you know, at once a month, twice, you know, twice every three months, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but is it possible to include that at a higher rate? Uh, sticker rate, you don't say you went up 25 cents on a sticker or uh, something like that. With, is that an option? Well, as part of the RFP, we did provide a proposal on our option one. Yeah, which I like. <laughs> which is, a, which is yeah. the w what you're looking for. So we, yeah. we, we provided it in that format. Okay. It, can it still be, can it be included in the unlimited? Uh, I mean, uh, it's still unlimited, right? Is it an option one? Is it still unlimited? No, I don't know. Okay, yeah. Let me clarify, may, maybe oh. it'll help a bit. We, when we went out for proposal, you know, we discussed this with the city council at a previous meeting, and we ended up, our proposal included, uh, oh, yeah. our um, proposal, I mean, our request for proposal included two options. One is, was to um, mirror what the services are now stay with the sticker program exactly like we have now, and that's the proposal that came in. The option was an all-cart program. So it, now to, to you're, you're really blending the two, which is really option one. It's a, it's a sticker program with the unlimited. With a volunt or you can go to a cart, it's a hybrid. That's what we have now. Mm -hmm. And those pi prices were reflected um, in, the, in the packet <coughs> material. Mm -hmm. But I'm a little confused about how, how you're you know, if, if you're looking to blend those, that's option one. Yeah, yeah that's what option one is. And, and can you explain for Alderman Vaughn that if um, we went to the hybrid program with the stickers, what the price would be then for the carts? Uh, doesn't one affect the other? Absolutely. Um, and that's why in option one, at least in our proposal, uh, we had a, uh, a higher sticker price than what you have now at about six dollars and twenty five cents mm -hmm. a little bit lower cart price but everything outside the cart would require a sticker and the yard waste would be a separate charge as well yeah. and so uh, whereas an option two in the all cart it probably satisfies more than eighty percent of the community with one price of twenty dollars for waste recycling and yard waste but obviously those that don't produce much uh, are going to are going to pay more um, but how much more? Because even with the sticker price, and I believe we were the lowest uh, in option one yeah. as well for like services, at three stickers, you're almost at the same price we are with the cart program. Yeah. And that's only three stickers a month. Uh, you're at, you know, what is that, $18.75? Yeah. Four stickers right there. So, yeah. in, so in effect, what you're saying is if we went to the hybrid program, those people who went with the carts would actually be paying more than they would under the carts only program. Yeah. Well, to, if they used a yeah. the sticker for anything, Stickers, yes. Yeah. Right, and they wouldn't get the uh, unlimited, the free yard waste, all, yep. the all, no. you can put out garbage, right. whatever. And, and obviously there, there's, in every community we've seen, every example, there's always gonna be somebody that's affected negatively by it. Uh, you know, there, there's somebody that might take their garbage to work. Uh, we see that in, in many sticker programs. There's people that might compost their, their grass clippings, so therefore they don't have yard waste, yeah. and all they're doing is uh, using the recycling. 
uh, but they're few and far between. But we we know that those exist in every community where this is offered, and it you know, and again, this the sticker programs aren't. Uh, uh, you don't see them in too many communities, but in the communities you do see them, that, uh, those are some of the examples. Uh, but I think what, what the community wanted to do, and we're seeing more communities do it, is look for a price that satisfies the majority of the community and, uh, and not some of the one-offs that maybe have uh, unique situations where they just don't produce much. I, th I think when we, you know, when we talk about this, and I, I had this young man here in my office today, and we were talking about government, and I told him when you make decisions, you sometimes don't make everybody happy. You're gonna have individuals who are not happy with something, and you're gonna have others who are happy, and what you try to do is you try to do what's best for the majority of the people. And uh, I said that's a difficult decision to make sometimes. And I think, and, and he's, he's a very observant young man uh, because he, underst he understood that uh, tonight we were, gonna, we were gonna have people who were gonna come in who were gonna tell us they weren't happy with a carts only program, they wanted stickers. And so it, it, it's, it's something that we have to look at as a tough decision, but at the same time, we have to go what's best for, th for the, the majority of people. I, I totally get it, we can't make everyone happy. It's just a question. Uh, earlier we talked about the RFID program uh, that you guys, I guess you used to have it, or do you still have that RFID tag program where it's, it's like a pay as you go system? Uh, yeah, we do, and I call it, uh, I can't coin this probably, but it's like the I-pass for garbage. Um, the <laughs> issue that really we have with the RFID is you really need tremendous scale. And so the community that we're doing it in, in Wheaton, we've got you know almost 15,000 homes, and that's what makes it work. But it wasn't perfect. I mean, we, it didn't work out for us in the first five years of the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't know what the set-out rate would be, and we found out that it was extremely low. <laughs> People got very creative when uh, they truly pay for what they throw. And so uh, on, the, on the second term of the contract, the rates have gone up sig significantly uh, to where on average they're paying $20 uh, a month. So it comes, uh, comes out to be the same cost anyway, right? So yes, yeah, okay. yes. Uh, but again, they're able to satisfy everyone with that type of program. But remember, you've got residents paying $40 a month in that system to make up for those paying you know, five or six. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, the problem with a, a, a program like that is you're going to have, you know, the, the, you know, the families that have two, three children, you know, they're not going to pay anywhere near 20. It's going to be tough. If you put your 95-gallon cart out every week, you're going to be closer to $40 a month mm -hmm. in a true pay-as-you-throw program where 100% of the community is on a pay-as-you-throw program. Got it. Mary? A um, couple questions. So going back to, since we're talking sticker program versus cart only, um, currently um, in our current program, people can put out recyclables um, without any sticker, they're picked up. If, if the city of Deering was to go with LRS and do the hybrid sticker program, wouldn't you have to sticker your recyclables too? We didn't, we didn't no. contemplate stickers for recycling. No, that'd, no, I'm be, just that'd be included the same way you have it now. Okay, so people who didn't throw out garbage could still put out recyclables at no cost. Okay, but it's costing you the service to pick it up. Yes, so, yes. okay. And then um, something that we brought up earlier was um, cost aside, some people other than seniors might uh, want a smaller re uh, receptacle, cart, whatever, <laughs> because um, of the fact that they're one or two people in the home or they just don't have the space for it in their garage. Um, is that something that people could opt to do? Still have to pay the $20, but could opt for a different, smaller size um, can? Yes. Okay. And then lastly, I know um, I've gotten some emails about people wanting the recycle bins, the open bins still, versus um, a cart with a lid, because um, you know they can stack them on things. But on the flip side, I just wanted to say, um, on a windy day um, in a neighborhood, the amount of um, garbage that is created, um, it's, especially in the spring months when things are, it's, it's a disaster with the open bins. So um, I, I think that there's a major advantage to having sealed um, carts for recyclables. Um, it just creates a lot less trash in our community. Yeah, I, I agree in that. 35 gallon cart, even the 65 gallon, I believe, has a, a similar, almost identical footprint. footprint yeah, it's the, the same the size. Bin. Yeah, at the bottom. It's just, it's just taller. Could you talk a little bit during the work session? You, you talked about co your cost for recycling. Could you cover that again now that we're on camera? 
Uh, yes, uh, so, so the, it, it's commodity driven. Um, when the markets are good, it, it, it's, it's good for the waste hauler and good in, in, you know, in the prices that the community sees. Um, about three and a half, four years ago, uh, China stopped purchasing commodities from the United States, uh, mainly our cardboard, our plastics, and uh, prices plummeted. Uh, so we went from making 30 to 40 dollars a ton to it costing over 90 dollars a ton to get rid of single stream household recycling. And so in this proposal uh, uh, from us and, and probably our competitors as well, um, we bear the burden of that, whether the markets are good or bad. Um, the markets have improved over the last three, four months to where we're a, you know, a little bit above break even finally. Uh, but I'm, I'm fearful that that may change a little bit after the holidays. Usually we see strong demand going into the holiday season and a little bit of a drop off in the first quarter. Um, it almost went up too, too fast uh, here uh, from where they were. You know, we were negative values uh, all of this year up until July. And, uh, and so the markets are finicky. We don't know where they're gonna be. Um, you know, we, we try to, to make some educated guesses in the proposal that we gave the city of Darien. Could you talk a little bit about your recycling program? You have your own recycling center? Yes, we've got uh, uh, two recycling facilities. Um, uh, we were fortunate enough to be the Illinois uh, uh, in, uh, sustainability winner uh, in 2018 and 19 for some of our technology. Uh, we've got a state-of-the-art facility in Forest View. And then uh, we acquired George's company, Roy Strom Disposal, in December. And we retrofitted his uh, facility for single stream recycling as well in Maywood, Illinois. Uh, and we're breaking ground on a new uh, state-of-the-art facility in Chicago. Um, and what makes it really state-of-the-art is the, not only the optic sorters that have been around uh, quite a bit that kind of could sort the different plastics by type, uh, but we were one of the first to have robotics where we've got a, a robot picking out different uh, types of commodities. Uh, our robot picks out three different commodities uh, from the stream. Um, and we're just utilizing the latest and greatest in technology. But we were forced to uh, put it an extra million and a half to two million dollars into that facility that we built in 2016. In 2018, we put two million dollars more into it just to combat the issues that we're having uh, with the low commodities. Uh, the low commodity price forced all of the recycling facilities to make sure they had a clean product with uh, very little to no residual waste in the, in the bales that we produce. And so we added more technology just to, to, to make sure that we had good clean material and, and so that we could have a sustainable product, not from an environmental perspective, but from a uh, ongoing uh, partnership uh, uh, that, that we could have uh, outlets for the material. Uh, and 100 percent of our our material is sold domestically so we've been domestic uh, even when china was buying from the u.s uh, most of our stuff is going to mills uh, in the midwest uh, and as far south as uh, alabama ryan um, <clears throat> excuse me thank you mayor uh, one of the uh, actually a couple of the proposals we're seeing now and in including from uh, lrs is the uh, e-waste and household hazardous waste now that, that is a separate from the prices and services we've been talking about, but in the proposal, as an example, it's called um, at your door special collection and uh, electronic uh, waste, your TVs, all your electronics that are banned from landfills. And, and now typically you're paying, I don't know, 25 or $50 to get rid of old TVs and things. There is an option in here for 30 cents a month for everybody for the electronic and then there's household hazardous waste that would add a dollar a month. The ha household hazardous waste, there are facilities to bring that to now like in Naperville and there's no charges but it's just more of a convenience. But the electronic, the e-waste has been a little more difficult I think for residents to, to um, dispose of. So we don't necessarily have to know that tonight but I if I think for the discussion, the, co the council should be aware of that and maybe offer any uh, any opinions on those two additional services if they think that's something that they would like to see uh, in the or in a final contract. Yeah, it, it, we'd like to get your opinion. Brian and I talked about that today. We'd like to know how you feel about that. Tom? Yeah, I'd like to know, uh, I, adding 30 cents a month seems like everyone's paying, well, obviously you're doing it because of the getting all the citizens involved in it and keeping it at a low level but is there an option or is there a way of doing it where you charged uh, at your door special collection and charged a flat fee so let's say i wanted to get rid of a tv and i called you up and said i want a special pickup and you would say yeah it's 15 dollars for us to do that for you or something 
of that nature rather than spreading it out and incorporating it into the contract? Uh, we could. It's just very expensive. Um, on the household hazardous waste side, it's upwards of about $300 a pickup. And so we're kind of running the, the law, you know, the, the law of averages here on how many people actually utilize the program. Uh, and e-waste could vary dramatically too. You know, it could be anywhere between $50, $60, depending on the type of TV, um, or less, depending on if it's, uh, if it's something small. Um, so the e-waste, I think it'd be a little bit easier. I think on the household hazardous waste, it'd be very, very challenging because the cost is so high. I don't think the residents would wanna pay $300 to get rid of, uh, you know, uh, 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 whatever hazardous material that they have uh, from the house, so. And, and what other, uh, what else is included in the e-waste? Would it be include batteries or would it include light bulbs? Because they're things that people are having a hard time getting rid of right now. Yeah, and actually what we could do with the light bulbs and batteries is we could provide at a public location a drop off. That's often been easier. Where we have a, uh, a, a you know a light bulb box for fluorescent uh, tubes and a battery box for batteries. Let me let me ask the council a question. If we decided to add the electronic uh, pickup at thirty cents per household, what if the city picked up that cost? <coughs> Would the council be willing to pick up that cost? That would be 30 cents times 8,000 households times 12 months, which comes out to be what about $24,000 a year. Would that be something you, the city would be willing to pick up? Mm -hmm. So as a program, we would do it for our citizens. We would, the we city would pay for it, the residents would get the and service. Offer it to everyone. I think it makes a lot of and sense. And how much did it cost when the environmental committee did the electronic recycling event? I mean, because that cost the city quite a bit of money. When we had it out in the parking mm -hmm. lot, yeah. And it, it was just one time. It was more, and that was just one time. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked the question. The council would have to approve that, but we could negotiate that in the contract if that's something the council was interested in. Tom? I mean, I, I would support that for two reasons. One, people are buying more and more electronics just you know, this is, as a society, we have computer chips everywhere. We've seen what the uh, supply chain has well, done. Not lately. <laughs> and, and I've gone through town a couple of times, and, and you see someone with a CRT TV put out there, and it'll sit for a couple of weeks because the current contractor doesn't pick it up, and it's just, you know, it's unsightly. And sometimes it could be a senior with a big TV. What do they do with it, right? They just sort of leave it out there, and unfortunately, sometimes someone might smash it, this or that. So I, I think it just makes sense. To so you would support that? Support that. as a, about uh, the people on the, all the men on this side of the Ted, Lester, Joe? I think uh, I'll be honest with you. You're chasing good money after good for twenty-four thousand. I mean, that may be a situation where we can go back to the residents of the city of Darien and for the people that you know have always liked the stickers, say we also have this situation because we're doing it. We're also being able to give this more. You know, it might it might help ease the pain. So if, if that would come up, twenty-four thousand is, I think it's good money. I do. Let me let me let me ask you a question. Um, if we did do something like that. Uh, years ago, we you know we have a free a leaf pickup program, and we were we had our hauler tell us that we went from 120 tons to 55 tons of leaf pickup, and we wanted to cut that program. We had an outcry from the residents not to do that, but they were able to measure on a monthly basis what they picked up. If we could look at that for a year, let's say we negotiated where the city picked up the electron cost of the electronics. In that year, you could come back and tell us, we, you know, the benefits, you know, for us as a city, to the point where maybe the second year we would say it's people aren't taking advantage of it. I mean, uh, I would like to see that data to know that it was something, you know, the return on investment was good for the residents of the city of Darien. That would be something we could negotiate in the contract. Yeah, and we would be open to that because this is one service that is. For lack of a better word, it's just a crapshoot for us. And if we can prove that it's not needed, we don't have to come as often, uh, our cost is less. Okay. Mary? And um, in terms of the other part, the hazardous waste, um, I think I would, instead of it being assessed on each resident, I would like to see, a, uh, like maybe at municipal services, there being a receptacle um, to get, you know, that people could bring it to our facility and maybe you know i don't know what kind of charge there would be for if it was just at one location but i think that would be ideal versus every resident being assessed for 
hazardous waste, not um, electronic, separate. That, that, Mary, if you're saying we should, we would have I a collection base uh, somewhere. Well, he, he talked. The gentleman talked about that as a possibility where people could drop off batteries and things like that. Yeah, that's not household hazardous material when you oh, talk about the batteries correct, or light bulbs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, but with Naperville so close, it's just my opinion that utilize that program. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. While it still exists. Yeah. Uh, it's a good program, I and you're close enough time. to it um, and versus you, everyone paying a dollar. People have been there. I mean, the workers are in suits. Yep. It's very. Uh, there's a lot of safety precautions. Right, right. right. I used to, I used, my material. point was like, I didn't think yep. that was something we needed to have everyone right. in our, re you know, yeah. if there was other options, whether it was us or, like you said, the Naperville location. Okay. Yeah, and then the, uh, the nice part about the e-waste program is the residents can actually register to have that item picked up once a month. So then we would have the information as to what was put out, what we collected, which we normally provide back to the city every month or every quarter. And then you can track, okay, you know, after one year, this is the participation rate. Do we want to change this from maybe monthly to quarterly if the population uh, pop popularity declines? Right. And then that does save, you know, over time, but you still keep the program. So you just reduce the amount of pickups to still we keep the e-waste program. We could actually stipulate that in the contract yeah. mm -hmm. that we got the data back and if we need to change from monthly to quarterly or whatever, we could do that. Absolutely. Okay. All right, and that would be for the electronics. And again, we would be picking up the cost for that then, right, $24,000. And that's something all of you, approximately. Yeah. approximately. Yeah, just, we would have to do the math because we would have to figure right. out total number of households, house house. which is about 8,000. So that number between 24, 28,000 in dollars, it's about that amount. I mean, we, we ran a recycling day about two years ago and we had a great turnout, but I think that actually cost more than what this would cost us as a city. Anything else for these gentlemen? Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, w one thing if you could cover, I think, which is really important, if, if this is approved by the council and we move forward, there has to be a, a obviously a big education program. Maybe your thoughts, at least sure. to share with the council, how this a changeover like this would be successful. What kind of notices might go out, things like that. Yeah, we, we, we've had a, a, a lot of success with transitions. We, we do about five or six with communities every year, and we've learned from them as well. And uh, we have a really good uh, education piece that our marketing team puts together. Uh, so we, we'll have multiple forms of education besides a flyer that's approved by uh, the city. Um, you know, it's like a trifold. I, I like it to be so informational that it's something that residents will put in a junk drawer of their kitchen as a reference point to look at. Um, and, and we left uh, a few copies uh, with, with the city uh, as part of our proposal. And uh, also just, just our carts in general have all sorts of education on it from the recycling cart uh, to those that want the organics cart. There'll be do's and don'ts with the food scrap recycling and what's accepted in there. Um, and then mailers too with, our, uh, with invoices that go out. Uh, we'll have all sorts of education pieces that are approved by the city. Uh, depending on the quarter, uh, you know, might the, the topics may change. Um, but uh, recycling has been somewhat fluid uh, for our industry, and uh, we'll keep residents abreast as to what's going on and, and keep it simple. So if we uh, approve this tonight and we negotiate a contract, that contract comes back, let's say, a month from now, and that's approved, we would start this education program then in January. Yes, as well as the the portal that we would open up for residents to choose their carts. Um, we would have that uh, available. Uh, seniors and those that uh, aren't as uh, fluent with technology could call our customer service center to sign up for that. And then uh, at that point, when that first brochure goes out, uh, we'll have all the education pieces there, plus education that will come with the cart when it's delivered uh, uh, right before the start of the contract. Right. The last item I have, I don't remember, recall if it was in the uh, staff memo, but all the references we checked were excellent. You know, the, uh, we called the communities you service, some that were listed in the uh, proposal, and I think uh, Lisa and our staff called called a few more. And the references have all been uh, really, really good. Just so everybody's aware that we did that, because I did talk to a couple references. I'm sorry, a couple uh, citizens to let them know that you, very good company and references all checked out very well. Tom. Last quick question regarding the last thing you were talking about. There are going to be people that are going to ignore that and not tell you what they want. Are, is there going to be a default setting where if we don't hear from that house, they're getting a 65 and a 
you know, whatever. I, I assume there will be something like that. Yes, we'll, we'll let uh, uh, staff determine what that default cart uh, size okay. is for the waste and the recycling. Lester? I think Tom brought this up earlier. That the flat rate $10 for seniors is a flat rate. There's no additional cost, right? Yes. On the record. Right. On the record. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. It's not a senior car. I think I know that uh, one of the... the, the although, there, if you um, look in the proposal, something like uh, a white goods pickup, that is additional. So I think white goods, and if somebody has a... A special, special collection, pickup. maybe yeah. they had a, a smaller construction project. There's a price for that. That's yeah. true. So just there's only those couple other things. I think, Les, your question was probably the mainstream, your garbage, you yeah. know, your weekly, all of those yeah. things. But just a couple of the things. Well, for all the proposals. Yeah, with unlimited, you can just I think use your, your neighbors. I thought your proposal <laughs> said, though, that <laughs> one cubic yard of you construction material would be picked up. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> That'd be a very small project around the mm. house, but... Uh, not major construction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions? Here, sorry, there, there's one more point, just for residents. What we asked for in our request for a proposal is a five-year uh, price with a two-year option. And I think both for the community and the hauler, you, you can't go a year because they have to invest, we have to educate. So I think it's pretty standard, the five years with maybe an option, but again, for residents at home, um, it's a five year, so the prices we're talking about go, are uh, proposed to go up two and a half percent annually after that. I believe that was the number. I did most of the, yeah. you know, the, the matrix um, comparisons. So what you see the first year, again, two and a half percent this, uh, each year going up. So, um, you know, a senior citizen in the, in the second year would pay $10.25 instead of the $10. I think w the other thing to point out, though, that in year five, your costs are still below what the other two were in year one. So it shows the difference. Anything else? Could we have a motion and a second? Yeah. Could I have the roll? Belzac? Aye. Klistik? Aye. Gustafson? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Shower? Aye. Sullivan? Aye. One. Aye. Seven ayes. It's uh, motion has been approved. Uh, that's you. Does anyone have anything to add of a general nature? If so, please come up and speak. Do any of the aldermen have anything, Mary? Um, just wanted to announce that Hinsdale South High School is going to be um, presenting rent the school edition. Um, um, November 11th through the 14th, there will be four performances. Um, tickets will be going on sale. Um, hoping that um, you know the county continues to track in a positive way because as of right now, with the current mitigations, they'd only be able to um, have 50% of the audience in the auditorium. But um, something to look out for, posters are going up and um, tickets will be on sale um, at the school as it gets closer. Uh, Mary, maybe you can talk on it. Um, the, the the benefit for um, Frank Trilla. Um, I am. Um, I, I have that. Okay. Um, tonight we have Floriano Caro here. Floriano is our mayor for the day. This was something that uh, we did to help Kingswood Academy raise some money. Uh, I've been asked by <coughs> Mayor Frank Trilla to expand our Mayor for the Day program uh, in order to raise money for the National Kidney Foundation. Uh, those funds will go towards assisting those who are on the donor or on the transplant list who need kidneys. Um, this fundraiser is gonna take place this month. I don't have all the details. What I am offering is I'm gonna offer another Mayor for the Day activity and <coughs> I'm going to also offer a lunch with the mayor activity. And Mayor Trilla is asking other mayors throughout DuPage County to do similar things. And he's got commitments from another, a number of them to do mayor for the day or lunch for the day or uh, dinner with the mayor, all in an effort to raise money for the National Kidney Foundation. When we get all the, we'll have all the particulars this Wednesday. 
And when we get those, uh, I talked to Mayor Trilla today, when we get those, we'll put those out in our Dairy and Direct Connect this Thursday. So people will know when the fundraiser is and uh, you know if they want to attend, they can attend. But we'd like to see people bid on a mirror for the day and uh, I'm more than happy to have people join me in a mirror for the lunch, uh, lunch with the mayor. So um, this is all an effort to assist uh, the National Kidney Foundation. And again, these are the people who need the kidneys and this is to assist them with some of their, their issues. Mayor King, uh, uh, Frank Schiller's King Car Wash on the 16th of October. Every car wash that day, a dollar goes towards this. Goes right. towards this. Right. So, um, anything else? I'd like you to give this young man a hand. I think he did an excellent. I told you. Did it. <laughs> Floriano was our third uh, mayor for the day candidate. I think he had a great day today. Can you tell us what was your favorite activity today? Um, I enjoyed going up in like the cherry picker truck, like 40 feet up in the air. That was pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. That's public works, right? <laughs> Dan enjoyed that too. Probably enjoyed the challenge. Get your plug in now, Dan. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Can I please have a motion to adjourn? Um, moved by Alderman Kenny, um, seconded by Alder Person Shower. All in favor. Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Hit the gavel.